What's up, Scrollgers? It's Nerp here, and I'm half decent at this game again. Um, I'm at number two in the ladder. I uh, shot back up into the thick of things uh, once I started religiously playing Gravelocks. Um, that's really what I've been playing the most lately. And yeah, so I was winning a lot, and I'm close to being number one. What I really want to do is I want to get the... Well, if you didn't know, you can check out the post on scrolls.com. Uh, there's now a, mine ca a Minecraft cape reward, if you don't know in Minecraft, like, there's like capes your player can have, in Minecraft, not in Scrolls, and, um, they're like really prestigious, and, like, it's like, a, they're like really rare, and so, um, a reward that they recently came out with was that you get a Scrolls cape in Minecraft, it looks kind of derpy, it's supposed to look like a scroll, it looks kind of weird and, like, kind of stupid, but, I mean, who wouldn't want it anyways? But you get it if you get five first place weekly winners. That's being uh, number one the latter five weeks. And you'd think that I have done that. I have done that, but I haven't done it five times since weekly winners were introduced in like June or July or something. Like guys like me, Blinky, PUQ, probably some others have amassed more than five weeks in number one from before weekly winners were introduced this summer. But since then, I only have, I think, two i have like 10 weekly winners altogether though but only like two for first place so i'm gonna try i'm recording this um a few hours before the weekly winners for this coming week gets introduced so um you'll know if i got number one by the time you're watching this video this video is probably uploaded like a day or two after so number two right now i think i'm 1834 tajik is 1858 so it's gonna take a couple wins Hopefully only a couple. And um, giving myself enough time so if I lose I have enough time to get back on my feet hopefully. And here's the deck. I've been playing, uh, like I see all these random Gravelock decks, but there's slight changes that I've just been messing around with. This is the one I usually use. It's, uh, I actually got uh, got the original deck from Donkey 74 and made a few changes. Um, notably, there's no violent dispersals. Um, usually don't. Usually don't say that with an energy deck with no uh, Valent Dispersals, but I don't know. It's it's been working without Valent Dispersals, so there's that. No Sparks either, but Cobble Automatons are kind of like the Sparks. It's kind of aggressive. I'm almost leaning towards putting like a couple Corrodes in because a lot of times I'm just really close to winning, but then just can't win. And then like these other decks that I have here are basically just rotations of scrolls, like almost like a sideboard that I use for certain ma for certain matchups. Because in ranked, oftentimes you face because with a little player base. You face the same person again so if i lose to like somebody playing an energy deck uh like a structure deck then i'll just quickly uh use one of my decks that is just the same as this but like i have tick bombs in it instead of something like you don't need potion resistance versus like decay against decay you want forges so you kind of get how i do that so um and again link to this deck will be in the description below so sit tight and I'll be back when a match is found. Alright, found a match. Let's enter. Hopefully we go first and we get a good matchup. Oslo hand and we go second. Alright, let's see our starting hand. And it's a pretty good starting hand because it can go nice early stuff. I do have like a void on turns 3 and 4. Hopefully I can top deck like a burn or something. Or like an uhu. We'll see. But uh, yeah, pretty good starting hand. And hopefully I don't see like Curse Decay because that kind of beats Gravelocks. Order, sometimes it's hard. Decay, okay. A little bit worried, but okay, there's two drop. Another two drop. Hmm. Let's get rid of the Iron Whip just so that we have a play every turn. And I'm probably going to play the Gravelock Guard instead of the High Explorer next turn because although Drawing Structures is great against Decay, um, Heart's Mogul is just like a target to be soul stolen. I mean, so does Gravelock Raider. But I mean, and also if I play the Gravelock Guard over the Smuggler, um, the Elder buffs it up. But, yeah. Let's see. A Tribesman. Okay. I could Copper Automaton on that, that thing right now. Right here, right now. Um... I'm not going to though, I'd rather just mass creatures. So, could move down. 
I'm not gonna move down. I might just still steal me anyways. So next turn, I will probably just play a hard smuggler. Put top deck a four drop. But maybe if it's Lockwing Brood, I wouldn't. I would sacrifice it. But if I top deck like an Uhu a burn, I'll probably sacrifice the hard smuggler for resources. So then I only have like a lapse of no nothing, no play at turn at turn four. But going uh, turn five six, Elder Freak should be pretty good, especially if I can keep these guys alive. Well, that's not too good, but hopefully this Greylock Guard is going to be able to get the RNG to destroy that. Uh, Storm Runner, I'd rather have over Hired Smuggler, especially because of Soul Steals. So I almost think I maybe shouldn't have played that Raider turn one, because then I'd also have another scroll here. So. Such is life. Okay, so now this this shambler is not gonna be able to get me. Cause um yeah. Like he's down here this turn, so at most he can move up next turn, but then I could just move up. He's he's like sticking down there, so I'm just I don't even have to move down here. Um oh it's tough. Do I want to... I think I'd rather get the Elder Freak. I don't like having no... Play, oh, that's really annoying. If it was an Uhu, I'd probably sacrifice the Freak and play it. But I think, especially if he's like a poison deck, Freaks are really good. So... Either way, I'm going to be like top decking next turn almost. You know what, screw it. I think we want to play every turn. This guy's going to be a 4 4 too, so it's not bad. And. Hopefully. I don't really care what it hits, actually. Alright, that was probably the worst thing it could hit. If it hit the Curse Mario, then be in burn range. It's pretty solid. And if it hits this guy, obviously. It dies, so that's pretty good. But he'll probably die to like a coming damage curse for the Elder. I'm sure Oslo Hunt is saving his damage curse. So I'm not sure if this is just a normal Monitor Decay build. Or like a curse build. Okay, so infectious blight. Not too good, but turn turn five elders should be good. Yeah, this is definitely not one of the good matchups for this deck. So it's gonna be pretty tough to lose this. Hopefully I manage to somehow win though. Okay. So the infectious blight's gonna slowly kill you. And Interesting. He, uh, his potion is I don't mind sacrificing versus decay because he could just damage curse it anyways. So I'm gonna go over the potion resistance, play the elder, and I can. He's just letting me kill his Meyer Shambler right here. I guess that's how he's positioned. And I don't mind moving my Storm Runner right into, like, the middle of the board here. His Curse Mario is in the bottom row, so it can't even move up and hurt me. So I'm just. I don't mind moving down with these dudes. And I'll just play Girl like Elder. I mean, he probably doesn't care because he's probably saving a damage curse anyways, so this Shambler would have been dead by the Elder anyways. But whatever. And probably, I don't know, he might use the Curse Monitor to curse the Storm Runner. So it just dies from the Infectious, the infectious Blade right now. We'll see. Bloodline Taint on them. Okay, so now this curse. So now my Grave Locks are going to start taking down. Hopefully I can get like an Iron Whip for one of my guys or something. Okay, you have it. It's probably the best guy that could have gotten it. Um, hmm. If, unfortunately, it can't sacrifice for growth, so I can't like keep healing this guy. That'd be pretty funny, because there's no growth in the deck, so I can't do that. I'll sacrifice girls. Hopefully, I draw like another elder. No, but uh, that's not too bad. I could play with both of those, and I could ramp up with that. And um, I'm just going to try to destroy like the middle idol as fast as possible I mean, this is kind of like a race almost and it hits that again i want to get i want to get rid of that curse monger okay so you're gonna you're gonna get hurt also just getting more creatures on the board is just good because um then the blight has more things to jump to less of a chance of going on important stuff like the elder Probably as a damage curse for the other. Anyways, going for more resources and maybe like an oblivion seed. Okay, so he's, he's he is protecting a little bit and a harvester. I don't have out dispersals in the de in this deck, so 
Four health creatures are hard for me to deal with. Fury, um, I probably think I'll just, yeah, I'll just go for resources and just use the, uh, omelet. Hopefully I get an elder or something. Uh, Lachlan Brood. Pretty good, I could play this turn. And, um, I'll put, uh, the outcast in front because he's infectious blight. So that forces, uh, the tribesmen to not move up unless he wants to get rid of the blight. And that way I also have... Uh, nice protection for the locking brood. I could put it right behind there and I'll take out middle idol so It'll be hard for him to uh, get rid of stuff unless he has like curse presence for like the Brood and stuff like that. That'd be tough. I don't actually if if the curse monitor just curses the Lockling brood I think it, I might actually die. I'm not sure. No, I think it would live I think you I think you have to play a, a spell or an enchantment not just a unit's ability so he goes for scrolls, and let's see what he does. All right, so hopefully there's gonna be no blight or damage curse this turn, as it kind of hurts me. Um, curses the elder, so now he um, he will die to one poison, like one one turn from blight or brain lice. Alright, no blight this turn, that's good. Okay. Oh, burn. Um, like I, uh, it's... I wish, that's why I wish, like, one of these curse mongers were at three health. Um... I mean, I'll burn this and then I can destroy the curse monger behind. I would, part of me wants to just sacrifice for resources just so I can like use this normal or whatever. What is Infectious Blight? You have Infectious Blight, alright that's fine. I actually would have preferred it goes on like a Locking Brood, but whatever. Locking Brood would be perfect if it, Infectious Blight went on him. But, I mean, I'd rather go on her than, especially my Elder. So I'll burn you. So now you're dead, Potion Resistance, we're going to sacrifice for resources. So we run out of scrolls and I can use this thing. Hopefully I get an elder or freak. Elder, awesome. Boom. Um I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hit the idols here. And I realize the is gonna be on two count. I'm gonna pressure the curse miners with this ray block, elder, and there's the locking bird here. This is a close match. Good in it. At least it didn't. At least it didn't hit the thing that was dying anyways. Probably should have moved him back. Now that wouldn't even work. I don't know. There's probably a way for me to have this guy attack first. So I would eliminate all chance of uh, wasting one damage. But if that happened, it wouldn't be the end of the world. So it, an Elder next turn is really nice. Because that means this guy does not die from one poison. So if he has poison this turn for this Elder, that would be uh, pretty bad. But he's only at five resources, so if he wants to get poison on this, that means the Locking Brood probably survives and stuff like that. Ideally, I can get like the poison on like the same creature and be able to like iron whip it away. Okay, so that guy's gonna be tough to do, like I said, because I have no, no stuff, no, um, you know. I'm gonna get rid of these. Stormrunner. Force. Eh, if I have Fury, would I play it this turn? If I drew like a Fury and a... Probably wouldn't. We'll see. Let's get rid of the Storm Bomb. But... Iron Whip. Um, I can get rid of the Infectious Blight here. Or I could play the Elder and take out an Idol. And then Iron Whip. Then you'd be at 5 attack. And deal a bunch of damage. But I don't think I'm going to do that. Iron Whip will not take account of the curse value. But that was changed. Okay, so. Let's let's just, let's just get rid of the, the Blight. So now there's no Blight on our board. And. I'll damage like. I'd rather damage the middle idols. Put you in front just because I don't want to waste any damage whatsoever. 
hide you behind here and play another elder. I guess I could put them in the same row. So now this guy does not die to one, like, one poison damage, which is good. Oh, I just realized the harvester attacks. But what, actually, what I did was actually not that bad. Because I probably should have moved him actually towards the middle. But having him up there... No, never mind. Whatever, yeah, that was probably a misplay. I shouldn't have... I completely forgot about the harvester attacking. Oh, well, he's going to die. But I have a pretty strong presence down on the bottom board with two elders. I'll probably be able to win if I am able to start drawing a lot of, like, low-cost grave blocks, like more more guards, raiders, you know, like those guys, and really try to fill things up. Rot Eater, he is, he is realizing that he has to protect. Okay, hopefully I can, like, draw a burn to get rid of this harvester. Obviously, burn the Rot Eater and destroy, hit the harvester behind it. Okay. Sudden Eruption is pretty good, but so I'm going to keep, I'm going to hold on to it, but... I mean, potion is actually not bad because if something gets poisoned, like with with a high curse value, you can slow, you can make the poison slow down. But I think it's more important that I get a storm runner out. So this turn is not a sudden eruption turn because really nothing really happens. Uh, another elder. Ooh, I can go triple elder. That's good. That's very good. Um, or would I rather go freak this turn? He only has one scroll. You know what? Here, let's take out the Rot Eater instead of outright destroying that idol. And play Freak. So, with one scroll, I don't think... I mean, he's obviously going to sacrifice for scrolls, but I don't think he's going to have, like, a way to get this Harvester to count down to zero. So it should be okay. And if there happens to be poison, my freak would count down unless the poison is on the freak, of course. Unfortunately, something like damning curse would not make the freak freak countdown. I'm just hoping there's no damning curse, but if there is a damning curse, I that means he probably doesn't have a he can't do a lot of things in the turn. So I'm feeling okay right now about this game. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty okay. I don't. I think I only sacrificed one Fury. I think there's two more Furies in the deck. I'm not positive. All right, there's a Bloodline Taint. Ah, oh, that was good. BC clicked on that guy to make him. Okay, that was good Bloodline Taint. And if that's his only play, that's okay for us then. And is he gonna move down with everybody? He doesn't. I'm actually happy he didn't move down with the harvester. Okay. Oh, and another Lachlan Brood. At this point, I think. Actually, I'm not sure. I think these three scrolls are more valuable than the Storm Runner. So I'm gonna get rid of the Storm Runner for scrolls. And if I, if I top deck, a, no, I don't. If I had more resources, I could have bigger plays. Thunder Surge. Having Thunder Surge and a sudden eruption is pretty. Pretty crazy. I'm, I could move up and take these guys out, but I, I think I'm just going to take out an idol and this harvester. And now you have three sets. So you're going to take. You're going to take six. You take. So you're going to take seven damage with poison. So one elder won't save you from poison. So playing an elder this turn wouldn't. Wouldn't be that amazing. So we're just going to take you out. You have curse. Um, I could play the, the another elder, or I could. I don't really need to though, because I'm not doing any extra damage yet. I think it might be wiser to just play a Lockling Brood and a Raider. I mean, it probably actually is better to save the uh, save the Ruin of Fury on the same turn. But I've also Copper Automatons in the deck. I'm not too too scared. Okay, he is, he is now he's some scrolls to work with, so I'm a little worried that he might have finally gotten like some damning curses. I've been pretty lucky that I haven't lost it either of those elders yet. I mean, 
So what I don't want to see is a damning curse, and I don't want to see a blight. But even if he does that, he can't even move down to this bottom row. I mean, he could Necrogut in this turn. Or no, did he sacrifice? He didn't sacrifice it, so he could Necrogut in this turn. Which would hurt a little. Actually, it would hurt a lot. No, wouldn't it? Wouldn't hurt a lot. If he Necrogut this turn, I'd probably be able to win because I could just like Thunder Surge away. And he wouldn't really do a lot of damage to me. This, this guy does have... Uh-oh, that kills you. Darn it. At least this guy attacks. And now what? Oh god, a Damon Curse makes you attack. No, 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 don't have a Damon Curse, don't have a Damon Curse. That was bad. I f oh god. And he had it. He's gonna take those guys out. So now let's... Oh, he just takes out Middle Idol. Why didn't he move down? That was strange. Very strange. Okay. Well, let's see. I can win here with a Fury. Uh, but what do I want to sacrifice? Thunders? Probably the Sun Eruption. Machinated, I can't win with because I don't have anything besides this attacking. I can't machinate it. Or else it would die. So that was kind of a bad draw. Could go for the Thunder Surge. I don't know. Ugh. You have cursed too. He has no scrolls. That's good. Let's keep the harvester alive. Let's take out you because you're attacking. Let's move you in. Move you back. You are going to have four attack. Let's play an elder and a copper. Oh, I didn't. I ran out of time for the copper. I don't like putting an elder in front. Like, if he's another bloodline taint this turn, that would be really, really hard to get through because you could just click on the lock and brood. I wanted to put this guy in front because I wanted to uh, not just let him destroy this destroy this uh with his four attack creature he only has two scrolls hopefully one of them is not a bloodline taint and i'm almost glad i didn't I, I, i'm almost glad i played that copper automaton too late like i played it too late so now uh, i'll just get it back next turn um i would have pressured him but at this point maybe he just leaves the letter open i can top click like a fury and be able to get rid of it but who knows maybe i'm going to be able to win to be able to win just by destroying this bottom model because i've imagined it that could go on this raider we'll see and it was important getting this other elder out because now this guy does not die to just one poison damage because now he'll take three damage from one poison if he has and he can't like damage curse and do all this stuff on the same turn he only has two scrolls so i'm not really that worried right now bloodline taint he would be able to take both of these guys out bloodline taint bell bell hole witch i probably lose unless i'm able to top deck like a fury next turn with a copper auto and just destroy this idol without being open We'll see. Also, Hunt's thinking. If he has a Necrogeddon, he'd probably lose. He can't really afford to lose his strong creatures. And my mine wouldn't really lose that much. He DC'd. Well, that's game then. It's kind of tough that he DC'd there. Let's see if I can destroy the other idol too. No, I can't. Well, that's game. Machinated gives you eight. And then just in case, let's machinate again. So, uh, that was close. Maybe DC because he knew he didn't have a better play. But, surprisingly, be able to win that. Hopefully, I gain a decent amount of rating, so I'm closer to number one. Uh, only seven. He was only, he was only 1,600. But that is, uh, seven's. A decent amount at the high rankings actually so thank you for watching um hopefully i will be i will be one step closer to getting that minecraft key even though i think i might already des already deserve it i think I, I think i can get uh five five weekly winners at number one 
So thank you for watching. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you guys next time.